I'm recording, so you don't need to worry about that. I'm going to hop over quickly to this assembly. Um, and I think, I can't remember exactly, I think this is as far as we got. You might just have to remind me. So we put together, although some of these bits and pieces, we didn't have like the screws and some of these other holes, but we put together basically the PCB, the base and the shroud. Is that right? Yeah, I remember putting together, I mean, I remember aligning them, I don't remember putting screws in. Okay, yes, no, I hadn't put the screws, so I said I hadn't put the screws in. Okay, so let's just, let's just hide those quickly. But that's easy, you, you, that, you, you know how to do that already. Um, yeah. Alright, so let me, let me show you quickly, uh, there's, there's not a lot that I want to show you, but it usually goes quickly, so... So the time goes fast. So I can't remember, were we in an assembly? I think we were. Um, let me show you a quick method of putting all the holes in. Um, so I'm going to go to inside the assembly. I'm going to click on the face and then say edit feature. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask, could you do this as a multi-body uh, part? Yes. File? Yes. Actually, I must just check, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could do it as a multi-body part file. That's a good question. Sheet metal. Um, I can't see why not, but uh, I'll check with, I'll check up and then I'll make, I'll send, send a message out saying yes, we can or can't. Let me just see who else is here quickly. Um, Hamza, Thirsteen, Morandini. Mulindini and Jake and, and Setu. Great. Just mark you guys present. Jake. Setu, did you come right with your with SolidWorks? And John is here as well. Uh, you somehow. Huh? Oh, okay, so sorry, I'm just checking who's here. Uh, Jacques, Hamza, Marindini, Kutso, John, Jake, Thirsteen, and Setu. All right, so um, just to start again then, let's just go back. Uh, for those who've just joined, um, uh, so I think this is as far as we got last week. What I want to show you is how to quickly put these holes in. Uh, if you've got your assembly and you're happy with it, I just click on a face, I right click and I say um, edit feature, which is down here. Um, so then it'll go back, it'll go to, if you see on the left hand side, the back panel of this piece and I can, I can insert. So I'm actually, in, uh, no, that's not actually going to work. All right, I am in the part now. You can see that um, on the left-hand side here in the feature tree, that part is bracketed, means it's, it's now we're in that part inside the assembly. So I can, I can click on that face and say I want to put a sketch on it. All right, and then um, because I want to see what's behind here, uh, the two things, I, you can actually make this transparent as you're looking at it, but I forget how to do it. Uh, right, so I'm redoing this bit from Thursday as well because I have a better way of showing you. So I'm first going to go to uh, options and remember on Thursday I showed you under selection, you need to select, um, both of these were unticked, selection in wireframe and HLV modes. Well, you need to tick both of these for this to work. So click that. And then um, if I open my, I'm not sure what this is called. Uh, but it's part of the feature tree um, and if I click on this item you'll see it highlights it and then what I can do is I can decide that I want just that item to be um, say hidden lines removed and that gives me much easier access to what whatever's behind it so uh, once that's done I right click on this and I say or I just click on this and I just say 
edit part. And so you can see, I can see what's going on inside the box. And if I want to click on a face and add a sketch, I just hold the shift button down and it'll click on that. And then I should get my dialog box, click on sketch. Um, and as soon as I click outside of this, this the, the, the view behind becomes apparent again. So here, if I click on a line, oops, um, I think you have to hold the control button down for this to be the shift button. Nope. Ah, right, so there was the shift button. Um, let's see, and if you can't get to uh, that view there, then you can always just tilt tilt your view and until you find that line. So um, let's hold the shift button down. And on Thursday, I had said that uh, the reason that you couldn't uh, sub uh, select more than one item um, was, I can't remember, but the problem at, for this this particular part is that this is one part. These are not three separate parts. So you can you can select separate parts if they're select separate parts and do what I did on on Thursday, which is I did an offset of I'm going to make it 0 0.2 or 0 0.15 I think is what my my drawing requires. So 0.15 is good. And unfortunately, I do have to do this um, one by one because this is not uh, a collection of parts. So I can select. Uh, yeah, let's just do it one by one. So I'll do this box. Oops. Right there, it's actually selecting through the item. Um, okay, I, I got rid of that by holding the shift button down and clicking on it. Let's try and get this one at the bottom. I have to zoom right in here. There we go. And lastly, this one. Zoom out. Right. So I'm going to click off my filter. So here, I'm not going to do all the holes. Is well, there's only one. There's two more. Um, that's that's enough to show you. Um, so exit the sketch and then just use that sketch to. So while it's selected, just um, punch a hole through through the metalwork. So link to thickness. Uh, where, is, where is that going? Is that going in the right direction? Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, there we go. It's done it. Right. Uh, and then once I'm happy with that, so you can just go back to shaded with edges. So it shows you what you've got. And that's how you get that right. So I'm going to exit the part. So you can edit a part in situ to get things like the holes. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm going to hop across to my part file because um, I want to show you how to what I need you to do for the for the uh, final project. Um, I'm going to uh, un unravel these. And then just suppress that one. So these panel holes here, here's my panel holes. Um, I renamed that panel holes. Those I created, as you can see, with a 0.15 offset. And I used it using that same method I've just shown you now. So that was that. Then the tab. Right, so this tab I don't think I showed you last week. Um, I need to add that curve in because um, if we go back to the assembly, and just make this enclosure fascia visible. So you, uh, you will have got this part already. Um, what I've done is I've taken that curve. I've taken off the sketch from this part, which is in here somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to get to it straight away. OK, 
Okay, never mind, but it's, it's in there. I've taken that sketch, I've control control C it, control copied. Then I've gone into that plane. So I put the sketch on that plane. Just edit this. All right, so there it is, radius 719. I've just linked it to these points and then added a, a line, which is at the moment should be it's either oh, it's just horizontal, but it can be linked to that edge. So that's all I've done is just created a sketch and then exited that and then uh, extruded that and then linked it to the to the um, to the object. So if I go into this edit feature, you'll see here that it's uh, it's not giving it to me. All right, but it's pretty much just a it's just a tab. So it's this command here. Let me show you. It's um, it's that base flange one, and then I would have selected that sketch and then added it to the sheet metal. Right. So and I showed you how to do the cut extrude. Do any of you need more info on that unfolding cut extrude fold sequence? So I'm going to assume that's a, a no. You're all okay with that? What do you mean like sometimes it does happen where you cut it when it's flat and then you bend it and then the cut goes away? Okay, it shouldn't do that. Um, let's just quickly go and have a look at that then. Um, so I, what I did here was I went from I went from unfold. So make sure you don't use the flatten command because if you use the flatten command, then it's not going to work. Okay, Hamza, so just the flatten is just a visualization tool. You can't use it. So if you go to unfold and you say collect bends. Oh, wait, we need to have a fixed face, which is that one. Collect all the bends. Right, and so then I can click on any one of these faces and insert a sketch. Um, and then I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can do that and then uh, linear sketch panel which is what we did last week so something like that All right so there's your pattern which you can then lock in with a few dimensions so that and then the others to your to your sensor the sensor points uh, I'm not going to do them all but just to give you an idea Okay, so you need one or two more there. Once you've got that done, you exit. Um, select the sketch on the left hand side. By the way, this is a this is a thing that I that you need to notice. If you if you select like part of the sketch, one of those, and you now say you want to cut through something, it'll only give you that sketch segment. So you can go and add the sketch segments to this now. And do it but the quicker way to do that is just to select the whole sketch in the left hand side and then do your cut extrude then you've got them all selected in one shot and we're done okay and oh, so that's why jake wants to know if the lesson is being recorded yes okay it is being recorded i'll just respond to him quickly so, so far, so good. Hamza, was that, are you happy with that so far? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. This is what you were doing. And you said that once you now, under, you fold it again. Then the um, bend goes away. It goes Sometimes. away. Why? I have no clue. It did it to me before. It just, I don't think it's a very common thing. It just, sometimes it catches me off guard. It shouldn't. Uh, then you've done, you, you have to have done something wrong then. Yeah. Okay, so maybe send me the file. I can have a look at it. Um, but that's that's yeah. If you do it right, it shouldn't it shouldn't not do it. It's not uh, solid. In other words, solid, SolidWorks is not erratic in that way. You have to have done something that it's not happy with for it to tell you there's a fault. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I hope it does. Oh, it's okay. That is three. I'm going to now. Delete because they're not part of my. Right, let's 
sketch delete okay so we got into unfold and uh, what the cut extrude was uh, we've done that fold see what all these other parts are all right so these other bits and pieces these are just holes that's a screw hole um, you'll see it's it's a little bit bigger than the screw hole size which is m3 so minus 3.5 which gives us a bit of leeway um, and that's it okay so now i want to show you how to go into a drawing from here so i'm going to say make drawing from part um, let's put it on a fairly large sheet a2 maybe even a1 Okay, so there are two things I can do here. Um, one is I can bring the flat pattern in straight away as a flat, flat pattern you see from your um, from from what you've done here. Um, and at the moment, it's giving me the bend the bend um, instructions. So down down um, is telling whoever's looking at it from this position use this dotted line to bend down with a radius of 1.1. Um, I genuinely don't want to see these so um, if they're in place what I do is you go to your view go to the bottom here more properties and you'll see there's a there's a button here under display state you can unclick that and it'll take all the bend lines away okay so I'm gonna want you to give me a flattened view now just to show you what other ways you can do it just let's assume you brought that model view in uh, there it is there it's going to do it already okay and it, it brought it in as a completed uh, shape so um, there's my view so i can change views and you can see what it is right so whichever view I brought it in if I want that to be a flat pattern all I do is go to the left hand side here you can see that flat pattern is available and it will flatten for, flatten it for you all right so in fact this um, this properties thing here that can be set in your options to not show it I obviously haven't updated mine uh, but actually I don't want that to be a flat pattern so I'm going to click on like that not sure why flat pattern ah okay so just look have a look at this quickly um, I clicked on the flat pattern to unclick it but in fact the configuration it's given me remember configuration files you've got a few here I've got my one of my configurations then there's a flat pattern configuration just choose the default it'll it'll go back to a view so what I'm looking for from you guys is a flat pattern like this which you don't need to dimension I just want to see that you can give me a flat pattern typically what you do is you would you would say some things are critical like uh, you might you might dimension let's just try and get that to dimension there we go you might want to dimension some of these lines Um, and you might give a note that they say that's critical you might say that these two oh dear okay let's try that again uh, where had we got to let's open this one in fact let's see if I can find that file open recent no I have to make a drawing from this from scratch one ah, I think I've chosen the wrong drawing no that's all I hadn't done control save 
All right, so I don't know if you saw there, uh, when I was in the drawing, it didn't show all the bits and pieces. It's just because I hadn't, I hadn't um, made my feature tree visible. Okay, so let's go back to this view. I, I should be able to right click in here as well and go to properties as well. So there's a quicker way to do it. Click off. There you go. Okay, so we want one of those. Uh, I'm going to save this so that if we get another crash, we'll be all right. So I'm reusing uh, a file name, which is one of my favorite tricks, just to create this uh, draw. Okay, so that's one. Um, let's just see if I can quickly get a duplicate view here. Control copy, control V, yes. Right, so that's another nice trick inside SolidWorks is you can do control copy, control V. I'm going to click on default take off flat pattern uh, no 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 don't do that okay so I've got a top view here we go um, right now what I'm going to need from you guys for this exercise is not a fully detailed drawing um, just because that's not usually how this industry works. All we need are some critical dimensions. So I'm going to say I want um, there go, there's one side view. Okay, these 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 here I think will disappear if I save. Let's just see. No, they haven't. All right, so I might have to delete these uh, these center lines, center marks. Okay, so I've got two views. Uh, let's get one or two more. So and now what I want is I want to be able to tell whoever's making this that there's some damage, some um, dimensions which are critical. Like for instance. I, I need to fit this bottom plate inside here. So um, one of the critical dimensions would be between the mouse is sticking and there. So 128, and then I can just make a note here, um, critical. Or I can just dimension the parts that I find are most important, like inside dimensions are critical okay so I might just dimension all of the critical ones and then just put a note um, to one side so just go to your notes and type in something like dimensions uh, given or here or something like that are critical. That would cover it. So just put that into your view. And all I'm looking for is I, this thing needs to enclose certain things. And so I, all I'm interested in is what are the inside dimensions? I'm not interested in the outside dimensions because the inside dimensions are the dimensions into which I need to fit that fascia, into which I need to fit the base, into which I need to get these parts here to align. So it would be those three are critical. Um, and then you might just give some outside dimensions, some overall dimensions, because those are always good. You always need them in an assembly. Just like that, and then uh, one here. So put all the overall dimensions in the same view or in a similar view. So these two control, control the or describe the overall dimensions, and this one describes the critical dimensions. And then obviously I'm going to need 
Um, at the bottom here, yeah, material, color, finish, and that's about it. All right, so I think we might be close to out of time. Let me have a look. Mm. Okay, just watch what happened there. <laughs> I clicked on this button on the shoal types. Um, I, what I really want is, I just want to take the origin away. But if you click on this and you take everything away, like, I've, like I did there, your bend lines will disappear and that you don't want. So this is good. Um, can't think of anything else I need to describe. If there is anything, I'll, I'll append it to, to, the, uh, to the recording. All right, so then the, the next thing I want to show you, if I can, is let's just save this. I want to go back to um, the extrusion, and I want to just show you how to dimension, although you've, some of you already submitted work, to so you can fix it up for moderation. I want to show you how to dimension something which is um, completely symmetrical around two axes. So close that down. We'll leave that open. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I'm not going to find it, am I? Yes, I am. There it is. Uh, it's the wrong one. So I'm going to open this from from my drawing file. I don't know if you knew you could do that. Let me just show that to you again. 